Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite new mama bougie vintage and today's video is my love and hip hop review. I'm reunion ready bitch. Okay, I got my whole fits. I got this jacket at Zara when I went to Montreal that time when I bought the sneakers and a bitch ain't wore it. Yeah, I still got the price tag on this bitch like I'm gonna return it. It was expensive AF. It was over a hundred bucks. I didn't realize the price tag was in a uh, European so the price tag only says $59.95 but the conversion baby ridic anyway let's get right into this reunion because child you know I don't want to film it not only that but I'm doing my makeup so it's gonna take really long my ear is clogged like you know when you like when you go on a plane so I can't really hear myself properly and it's driving me insane. Today I will be featuring the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. Super cute if you guys want to review for this palette because there is really not a lot I don't think on YouTube. I was looking for looks last night and I was like there ain't nothing about this damn palette on the internet. I'm really excited to use this palette. It's gorgeous. If you guys want to review for it let me know in the comment section below or just give this video a thumbs up. And hey f it why don't you subscribe bitch? I never ask people to subscribe to my channel because I really don't give a fuck. I feel like there's no point to subscribe. <laughs> That's mainly because I have over 300,000 subscribers, but my view count doesn't match. So when people subscribe, I'm like, what the fuck is the point? Anyway, subscribe if you want to. If you don't want to, keep watching, whatever. I am going to get my beat on while I spill some tea. So let's get it shit popping. Whew, chow, the heat. Is that HD for you? I feel like something's wrong with my settings. If you want to know what products I'm using, just check the description box. So, of course, the reunion started off where the last episode ended, which was basically Tommy and Spice going at it. Tommy is standing up, Spice is sitting down at this point, and she, this mirror is the bomb. Tommy is instructing security, okay, instructing them to basically back up off of her and for them to relax and like sit down and mind their business because obviously she was ready to wow out but security wasn't having it and so she was telling security that they need to move from around her. I was like, how are you gonna tell security what to do? Security's here to secure, okay? <laughs> but Tommy was not allowing the security to secure. She was basically letting them know like She's not going to pop off, I guess, because she didn't want them to touch her. And if they did touch her, she was going to wow the fuck out, which is nothing new. Security kind of probably has to have their own little meetings about Tommy before they even get on set. So, of course, Tommy and Spice are still going at it, saying, bitch this, bitch that. They are arguing, honey. They do not like each other. They are not here for each other. So they both start talking about disrespect. I guess disrespecting each other and how neither one of them are going to allow the other to disrespect them. So Spice starts telling Tommy how she's disrespectful to her own mother. And so Samantha, Tommy's mom, is sitting there and she's like, don't worry about me. <laughs> don't worry about me. Basically telling Spice to mind her business and not bring her into their argument. Their argument is separate from hers and Tommy's. And so Spice tells Tommy to stop blaming her the hell is that on my eyelid? for her bad attitude. So Tommy tells Spice, fuck out of here. She's basically telling her to shut up, like nobody wants to hear her talk, blah blah blah. Spice starts to say that everybody's fake and nobody is real or keeps it real with Tommy and nobody wants to tell Tommy the truth. So now when Spice comes around and does it, Tommy doesn't really know how to take it because everybody's used to like kissing Tommy's ass or whatever. I swear I do not know how to work with this product, but it's so bomb. <laughs> it is so bomb. It, it always like, you know, slays my shadow, but chat, I do not know how to use it properly. Sometimes I just put it on the lid and let it just dry just like that, but whatever. So Tommy tries to defend herself. She says that's not her problem and states that... She has no issue at all with people keeping it 100 with her. So Nina interjects, I guess, to kind of cool things. Tries to get to the actual bottom of the situation. Because when the show wrapped, 
Space and Tommy were actually on decent terms. It wasn't until, I guess, one of the episodes aired and Tommy took to Instagram and was blaming Spice for, I guess, everybody calling her an alcoholic. So if you guys remember, in I did play Spice's clips because she was dragging Tommy on Instagram. Uh, Tommy had come for her first, and so she just had retaliated or responded to the Instagram post that Tommy had made, and that's basically when they fell out and they have not been able to rekindle their friendship. Tommy starts to say that uh, Spice was on Instagram, or Spice was like basically fucking with her livelihood, because if she is a brand new artist and she's coming out and Spice is over here talking about Tommy's late and this and that, then it makes Tommy look bad. And so Spice was like, but Tommy, that's the truth. Why do you want me to say otherwise? That's what happened. It is what it is. Deal with it. You know what I mean? And I agree with that. Sp Nobody can make you look bad, okay? If somebody's talking the truth about you, then they're talking the truth and you have to hold that. It's not... Spice's fault that Tommy was three hours late to her own video shoot like who does that it's there's just no level of professionalism there and if there is professionalism there cha it is the lowest form of it so Spice isn't wrong in saying that Tommy is late so basically Tommy wants uh, or Tommy didn't want Spice to say those things about her because she feels like people won't want to work with her if she's a new artist and they're hearing that she's late and unprofessional. So at this point, it starts to get a little bit ugly. <laughs> um, Tommy starts saying to Spice that her energy's good, her face is good, and she starts pressing Spice about why Spice, since she's such a big pop star, why is she on Love & Hip Hop? And so she basically starts coming for Spice, saying that, you know, she's basically trying to discredit Spice at this point, which she's been trying to do since they started arguing. Then Spice starts to say to her, oh, please, oh, please. <laughs> she says, what are you doing on Love & Hip Hop? You've been on it for years. However, she said it in Patois. I'll try my best to to quote her properly. You on Love and Hip Hop been on it for years. What you that on it do? I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> I said, bitch, she came for her. She show did. Oh my goodness, I couldn't. She said, what are you on Love and Hip Hop doing? Because honestly, in all the years Tommy has been on Love and Hip Hop, she's probably released one song, one video. I don't know. I don't watch World Star, so. Tommy's been trying to be a rapper, but she's her own worst enemy when it comes to the rapping stuff because she's constantly being recognized more for her drinking and her other issues and getting arrested than she is for her music. That's not Spice's fault. That's Tommy's own fault. So they start telling each other to calm down. Tommy starts crying because obviously Spice is hitting nerves here. So we end up switching topics and we start talking about Tommy's scene when she went wild, basically talking about she has bigger problems and she's going to jail tonight or whatever. Nina basically wanted to get to the bottom of that situation. And Tommy says that she was really turning herself in that day. She wasn't just saying that because she was drunk, but I guess that paired with the Hennessy and the alcohol really like took it to the next level. So Nina asked Carly Red about her position because in the video or in the well, during the season, she was literally sitting across from Tommy and she was like, Tommy, Tommy, and she's yelling trying to get Tommy's attention because they were filming and Tommy was going way off topic. So at this scene, when Carly Red starts explaining why she was over there yelling Tommy, I just was like, bitch, stop begging. Like, I was actually sick because, okay, we all know Tommy and Carly hate each other. You know, they dislike each other. Any chance Tommy gets to, like, I guess be petty with Carly, she takes it. And so they do not like each other, but Carly Red was over there sitting on that couch begging, and it was almost like, she wanted desperately to talk to Tommy. That's how I read it. I, it's like if you have like, if we got beef, we got beef forever, bitch. 
I ain't about to be over here sitting on no couch get, talking cordial with you, bitch. I don't even know you exist, but that's just me, okay? So I just felt like Carly Red was doing the most at this point. I feel like it was just so high school. I was like, oh my god, she wants to be Tommy's friend. That's what the energy that I got from this scene was Carly Red wants to befriend Tommy now. Like, she doesn't want to have drama with her. Tommy's a bad bitch, so I get it. But that's basically how I felt about that scene. I just felt like she really wanted to, I guess, kind of dead whatever her and Tommy have and move on from it, which is the adult thing to do. But I just feel like the way she's going about it is whack. Anyway, Carly Red was basically trying to say, like, she's been there before. She's been in that position where Tommy was, and so she was just like, I see you, you know? She was trying to get her attention for that reason. They seemed amicable almost at this part of the show. Nina addresses the whole scene where Spice tells Tommy to stop laughing, which is the same scene that we were just talking about. And Tommy was basically saying that it got her upset because she's just like, bitch, let me laugh or I'm gonna come across your head top. <laughs> you know, she needed to laugh at that point. And Spice should have left her alone because it's either she laughs or beat Spice's ass. Yeah, I don't know. So then they roll the tapes of Tommy meeting with the substance abuse guy. So Tommy says that she gets annoyed when people that don't know her from a hole in the wall try to tell her about herself and whether or not she has an addiction and blah, blah, blah. So she was irritated with the substance abuse guy. She stated that she hadn't had, or she hasn't had a drink in a whole entire month and they roll the tapes of uh, I guess her drama with Versace. I'm kind of sad Versace wasn't at the reunion but I guess she's not really a cast member. Maybe she will be next season. I don't know but yeah they roll the tapes of her drama with Versace and her mom. Tommy states that her and her mother as well as her and her sister they're good now. There's no drama there they see eye to eye and then she starts crying and expressing the fact that she knows there's lots of young girls watching and she doesn't want them to think like it's cool to disrespect their mother but then she says but at the same time <laughs> uh, that's the respect that she was given when she was growing up and I think it's fair to not judge I guess the way people interact with their parents unless you know their whole situation because you don't we don't know you know we don't know what the heck they've been through we only know what they've told us and I don't think it's fair to judge her based on that I mean I guess there is a level of disrespect that you that you can really cross but I feel like every family kind of has their own dirt and drama that they have to deal with and it's a work in progress so we don't know what Tommy went through as a child and what she had to do dealing with her mom and so if they're trying to build a relationship now as adults it can be hard because they don't know each other properly but if Samantha doesn't have an issue with it then let it the fuck be. So Nina asked Sam about her ambushing Tommy with the whole video, uh, with the whole photo shoot, family photo shoot thing. And this part's boring. We're just gonna skip over it. Nothing important here. Nina asked Tommy why she decided to squash her beef with her sister. And she basically says she knows her mom really wanted it. And also, she's not one to hold grudges. I don't know about all that, okay? When she said this, Spice was over there like rolling her eyes like, is this bitch for real? Tommy definitely holds grudges if she feels, it, depending on who it's for, but Versace is family, so she gets a lie, I guess. She also states that Gucci the pig is gonna be evicted because he's been doing the most to her poor couch. I didn't even know pigs could but, well, like, freely like that, you know what I mean? It's not like he has a hand that he could like, whack off with, so... I can't believe the pig is doing the most to her couch, but it is what it is. So moving right along to the drama with Miss Sierra, one of my favorite people on this show. 
even though she's a little, you know, silly, <laughs> for lack of a better word, yeah. So of course, <clears throat> so of course they start by running the tapes back. <laughs> And um, I think my favorite scene of this entire season was when Sierra bopped Keely over the head with the purse. I mean, that scene was just great. It was iconic. <laughs> and we were living for it, plus Jock in Confessional. So I lived to see that scene again. Like, honestly, <laughs> that is one of Love and Hip Hop's finest moments. So Nina asked BB Gun how he's doing, obviously, since his son passed. So obviously it's it's hard, he said, but he has his days and I don't think you could ever adjust or, well, you're going to have to adjust, but I don't think you ever get over losing your child. Like, that's not, that's your flesh and blood, like literally your flesh and blood. He said that he has his days and so Nina asked Sierra how she was there for him when this all happened and she says first of all I was blocked you know I tried to reach out to him but he wasn't really interested in talking to me so I decided shit so I decided I would give him his time and when he's ready to, he will, you know, reach out to me when he wants to talk. So, <clears throat> Shooter says he feels like Sierra did the bare minimum like Mariah Carey, bitch. I said, oh my gosh. Um, he said she did the bare minimum, that she could have done way more. He said it didn't matter all the stuff that was going on. She needed to put all that stuff aside or behind her for that time in particular and just be there. Not even as his wife, but just as a friend, you know? And so Keely's over here nodding her damn head like somebody asked if Keely was ugly and she's nodding yes, bitch. <laughs> and I was like, if this bitch don't mind her damn business. So they start addressing Keely being very vocal about Sierra the entire season. And she starts talking about how BK was in the picture when uh, Sierra was still married to BB Gun and that it was wrong. So Sierra's like, baby. <laughs> she said, was it wrong? for him to have a whole baby? Was it wrong for him to be sleeping with however many bitches? And I was like, you better stand up for yourself, bitch. Cause Keely don't have no place on earth, okay? She doesn't have any damn place to be opening her mouth about this stuff. Like, it's none of her damn business. Like, who is you? So, of course, Sierra wasn't done yet and she tells Keely that Keely needs to mind the business that pays her and then tells her that's why she ain't got no damn money. I said, bitch, a read, a read. I said, bitch, you better. I said, that's my new favorite line, bitch. Mind the business that pays you. Mind it, bitch. She took that hoe to the whole ass library. Took her to the library. She took her to the factory where they make encyclopedias and read her, her, Freaking right, bitch. Dropped her ass off at the police station and said, lock this hoe up and throw away the key. And I was here for it. So Nina starts asking about the purse incident. <laughs> and at this point, I was praying they would play the clip again. And while she's asking about the purse incident, Keely is making sure to keep her little mouth quiet before she gets bopped on the damn head like the field mice. Again, okay, because Sierra is little rabbit foo foo riding through the forest and Keely don't want no smoke. So Sierra says when it happened, she was just mad. She was mad at Keely already and Keely said what she shouldn't have said. So that's why she bopped her on the head. And so Nina was like, so it wasn't about jealousy. And she said, definitely not. I put that on everything I love. Now she did look 
a little shifty when she said when she puts that on everything she loves but I don't think she was jealous because at that point she already had BK number one number two she didn't hit Keely when Keely said that that was Shooter's girlfriend she hit her when Sierra was so unbothered she's like who's that who's Shooter I don't know no Shooter she hit her over the head when Keely mentioned the fact that a shooter is the reason that she has the chains on her neck that she's wearing. That's when she hit Keely. She didn't hit Keely when she introduced that girl as shooter's girlfriend. Sierra didn't give a damn. And that's why they were really mad. They tried it. They tried it. So Nina starts addressing the peace rally and how Keely threw the pen at Sierra's head. And Sierra says it's obvious she was just on some retaliation ass shit, but that's how you know she doesn't really know a uh, BB gun like that because she had no respect for his son. She's like, catch me outside. How about that? Okay, she said, catch me outside, not here at the peace rally. Like, where's your class, bitch? You ain't got no class. You ain't got no damn class. Ugh. I hate an unclassy bitch. Anyway, so of course, Keely starts trying to make excuses for herself, but they ain't going over well. Okay, you cannot make an excuse for yourself when you threw a pen at somebody at a peace rally for a young, a dead young man. Like, wh where do they do that at? Where do they practice that at? Let me guess. I'm from Detroit, bitch. Bye. See you the fuck never. See you never. This bitch, y'all know I hate Keely. I'm sorry. My opinions about her will be biased for the rest of the reunion. So, <laughs> bitch, deal with it. If you a Keely fan, there there literally are no Keely fans. <laughs> there can't be. If you are a Keely fan, we're praying for you. So of course, BB Gun says that he was most definitely offended when Keely tried that mess at his son's uh, thing. And Keely started talking about how if Sierra wanted to talk, then she should have approached her in a different way. And so when she's talking, Sierra looks over at her and she says, I don't want to talk. <laughs> I said, bitch, yes, of course we don't want to talk. There's nothing to talk about, Keely. You're a field mice and you're getting bopped. That's just what it is. Deal with it. <laughs> so basically, I stand Sierra. She's a mood. And that's that. So then we move on to BK and Sierra's drama. Ooh. Yeah. And so they play, obviously, their highlights. And at the end of the scene in Houston, he tells Sierra that the next time she cries, it's going to be because he put a ring on it. So, of course, Nina challenges him. And she asks him if he's going to put a ring on Sierra's finger. And you know what this trifling ass man said? He looked very uncomfortable, first of all. But he started saying he will not be putting a ring on anybody's finger anytime soon. And I was like, this man right here. This damn man. He starts again saying how Sierra is his best friend and how she's dope. So Carly Red interjects, and this was the one time Carly Red interjected and said something and I was like, thank you. Because she said to him, you use this best friend term way too loosely, too much. You need to kill it, right? And so I'm like, I agree, like what? And so Tokyo was agreeing with Carly as well. And I think we can all agree here that he definitely does use this term way too much. Sean starts addressing Carly now, and he says to her, he's like, why are you always gonna say something to that man? And she's like, basically telling Sean, listen, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. So mind your damn business. He starts telling Carly how it's obvious she still likes him, and I was like, this is uncomfortable to watch. Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. So we get back to the stage and BK is talking about how Amber is a liar and how Joy has always been a side bitch. You know, it's never been like 
a main squeeze thing with them too. And I was like, this man is three much for me. I can't, I can't deal with him. So anyway, Sierra starts saying how she can't deal with no more cheating shit. Like it's, it's just not a thing for her. And she says that if BK cannot be faithful, then she will, they'll just have to be friends. I think that's fair, you know. So of course Nina starts saying something corny AF and she was basically just, I guess, building the anticipation up to expose a scene that was never before seen where BK was at a hotel and when she says this, the audience of course is like, ooh, and then Sierra's like, what hotel? I thought it was gonna be super freaking juicy, honey, but it was not even hot tea, girl. They were serving ice cold tea, okay? It was iced tea, sweet tea. It didn't quench our thirst at all. And so the tea basically was that in this never before seen clip, BK was in a hotel with Miss Joy, and they were basically, uh, they were basically having a conversation where he was denying Sierra's ass like Judas himself, child. I said, this here is certified Judas, okay? If Sierra was Jesus, BK was Judas or is Judas. So, of course, in the scene, Joy asked him if he wants to go play. And then she starts, she hops on top of him. And they start, I guess, necking. I don't know how they do that shit on camera. I would be so uncomfortable. I'd be like, yeah, no, no thanks. But I guess it's easy if you really have feelings for somebody. But even so, I don't think I could do it. Especially if I knew I was only a part of a storyline. Like, I'm good, love, and joy, you know? So once the scene ends, and we get back to the stage, BK starts stuttering like his name is Joe and it's just clear that he is not a good liar. He's asked if this scene was before or after he decided to make it official. Are they official? I don't even know. With Sierra. And so he says he doesn't know what to say child but he is stuttering like a mother effer. He ends up saying that he was single when that happened. So I guess that confirms that they are indeed a couple now. Honestly, let me lay down my glitter and then I'll get back to talking about this mess of a show. So Sierra says that she did not know that BK and Joy were like that, but, sorry, y'all know I can't be talking and doing wing liner. That is just cause for disaster. She says she cannot fault him for anything he did before she signed the divorce papers. And though she feels that way, the audience felt a completely different way and they were kind of almost booing that statement. And I was agreeing with it. I was like, I agree because she was taking mad long to sign the divorce papers in the first place. My only issue with BK is that even now that the divorce papers are signed, he still insists on calling this woman his best friend. And I totally get being friends and lovers. Hello, hi. Me and Shooter are definitely BFFs. But Shooter's not going to be out here denying me, talking about, nah, nah, she's not my wife, she's my best friend. Like, no. <laughs> no, bitch. Even when we're boyfriend and girlfriend, he could never, okay? That's an issue, a big one. So Sierra states that her and BK are good until he fucks up. But in my eyes, he's already effed up. I don't get why she's okay with him referring to her as best friend, she's dope. Like, no, you're not describing. <laughs> are you guys boyfriend and girlfriend or are you guys best friends? Like, come on. Unless BK is sweet, there's no reason for him to not be saying, what the f Fenty, we have an issue. Like, that's not okay. <laughs> that is not okay. 
Oh my gosh. Luckily, I didn't do any other makeup yet. Like, I still have to... No, this is not cool. Why does it bleed like that? That's crazy. I've never seen anything like that in my life. So, when Sierra was talking about how um, her and BK are going to be good until he Fs up again, um... Carly Red interrupts and states that they will be beating his ass <laughs> if he does mess up. So I, I don't know. I don't think Carly Red is very scary. So I definitely see BK messing up again. By the end of them discussing BK's bad habits, BK was fed up, sister. Like. <laughs> He was so fed up, he's like, alright, who's next? Who is next? Can we please move on from me? He wanted to get out of the hot seat so bad. So, then we move on to Tokyo and Tobias. And Tobias has asked what initially attracted him to Tokyo. I didn't like this question because... I didn't think it was necessary, like who the, who gives a fuck, why? Nobody else has ever in the history of Love and Hip Hop been asked this question. It's only being asked because Tokyo is overweight. If she wasn't overweight, they wouldn't be asking this fucking question. So, of course he starts his sentence off with, obviously Tok has some weight on her. But then he explains that her confidence is really what drew him in because he said he doesn't know any woman more confident than Tokyo and that's obviously attractive to him so of course because Erica is dick riding um, when Tobias is talking about Tokyo's confidence Erica's like fact bitch if you don't stop interjecting with your no storyline having ass nobody was talking to this bitch why is she talking Nina then asked Tokyo about her virginity and she further explains it for the people in the back that don't understand why she doesn't have sex. She basically threw all her homegirls under the bus <laughs> and said that all her homegirls niggas are cheating on them. And of course Sierra felt some type of way but she made a joke out of it. Uh, she said so you know it doesn't make a man any more faithful if you're having sex with them so that she really doesn't see a point like she's just when she's ready, she'll be ready, and she's not going to let anybody, you know, force her into having sex if she is not ready for it. I think her being a virgin and being open about it is one of the most refreshing things about the show, one. And two, it's one of my favorite things about Tokyo because she's not ashamed that she's a virgin, she's not embarrassed, and I think that the reasons that she is keeping her virginity is cool and I agree with them like too many young girls are out here popping they open for n that don't deserve it you know there's not too many virgins left chat people are losing their virginities way too way too young okay so I'm I'm I like the message Tokyo comes with rumor about Tobias and Carly Red gets brought up because Keely is on stage. Why was Keely on stage? Why was she on stage? Like, I couldn't understand it. And what irritated me was she was on stage, but Just Britney was it when it was Just Britney. Like, why wasn't Just Britney on stage when she was there to talk about her part of the season, you know? It didn't make any sense. Which is probably exactly why Estelita was over there yelling, talking about she's not a cast member because she wasn't even sitting on stage. A lot of people didn't really sit on stage though, but still. Jock actually starts shedding light. What the fuck? Jock actually starts shedding light about um, Tobias back in the day at Carly Red's video shoot because that's where they met he was uh one of the models in the video and jock was trying to say he knew something was going on between them from that moment <laughs> because he was shirtless at the video shoot and all kinds of fuckery i was like what is wrong with jock anyway nina asked keely about tobias i guess her relationship with tobias and so she starts to go on this Spiel. She stated that she's known him for 10 years and that he was her artist. So 
um, Tokyo interrupts her and she's like, oh, I thought he was Blue Da Vinci's artist. And so Keely said, what was that? <laughs> and so uh, she's like, I thought he was Blue Da Vinci's. And so Tokyo's like, I thought he was Blue Da Vinci's artist. And so she's like, he was my artist too. And so Tobias is basically starts saying how, well, Keely ran the business. So technically he was her artist as well. And so Tokyo says to Tobias, oh, like, like making sure you get on the plane and shit like that. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, oh, cool. <laughs> All the shade. The whole tree was being thrown at Keely, and I was like, damn, Tokyo was out for blood today, bitch. I'm here for it. Of course, Miss Erica Mena is laughing at this. The audience is laughing. Everybody is taking a chuckle at Keely's, at Keely's expense chat, and I was too. I said, yes, bitch. If anybody comes for Keely, I'm here for them. So now Keely's like, Tobias is a liar. Everybody knows that. And I was just like, and so Tokyo's like, oh, well, you're a liar too. <laughs> and so she's like, what have I lied about? Tokyo's like, you haven't broke artist yet. <laughs> I said, Tokyo, take your foot off this lady's neck, please. Take it off. I couldn't deal. I was like, why is Tokyo going in today? She was going in. She was letting this girl have it. So clear, clearly at this point, um... Keely is upset, but she's trying to hold it together, and she's trying to act unbothered, but it's so obvious that the girl is bothered, okay? I would be too if I were Keely. She was bothered. So Tokyo tells uh, Keely, you're an A&R, but I don't see you A and or R, and I said, I can't even deal right now. Like, this is too much. Keely starts telling Tokyo she doesn't know what she's talking about, blah, 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 and they basically start arguing. Keely's upset. <laughs> I can't. So Tokyo starts to tell Keely that she tried to bully her, and she said she's not allowed to bully her. She's not going to bully her. She said, bitch, if I was a booger, you ain't gonna pick me. <laughs> she said, don't pick me, you fuck around and your nose start bleeding, you pick me. I said, I can't. These are some classic lines Tokyo is saying. Like, add this to my arsenal. Anyway, Keely starts saying that from what she knew because of Tobias, he is the one that told her that he was smashing Carly. She was told that the relationship was a sexual one. So at this point, it turns into Keely versus everybody, and everybody was getting at her at this point. Carly Red started involving herself, obviously, because they were talking about her, and she starts, uh, I guess, giving clarity to the situation because they already clarified that they did not sleep together. Everybody's kind of going wild. Tokyo's calling Keely Mrs. Potato Head. Like, I. <laughs> Honestly, it was a lot going on. Like, there was a lot going on. So much so that Keely couldn't even get a word in jail. She really couldn't. She was like, shut out. Nobody likes her. The people at home, the people on the stage, the people on the couch, and the audience, nobody was here for Keely. So then the topic switches. We move on to Tokyo and, um... And uh, Spice drama, which was cleared up a long time ago. They don't have drama. Spice tries to defend herself again because obviously she did take a lot of heat uh, after the whole fat shaming thing. And she tried to explain that in Jamaica there's no such thing as fat shaming. And she tried to give an example, but the example that she gave was positive. Like it was like... She was trying to say, like, if somebody was calling to Tokyo on the street, they would say, Wagwan Fati Boom Boom, or something like that, you know? And so Tokyo basically sheds light and says, okay, but that's like if I say, hey, bitch, what's good, bitch, you know, and your friend, but then when we have an issue, I turn around and I say, bitch, what's up? Like, it's different, you know? There's two different ways to say bitch just like there's two different ways 
to address somebody as fat. <laughs> so she explains that and so Spice basically had to like say okay you guys are right like when I said it it was obviously coming from a place of malice and it wasn't the same. So she does clarify that and they move on and they're good now. Tokyo really likes Spice. Spice likes Tokyo and they do a music together. I said okay I'm not mad. I can't wait to hear it <laughs> because the song with Tommy was alright, but it's not like I downloaded it or anything and have it playing in my car. Maybe I'll give it another chance, but don't care for it. I've heard way better. So they address the drama that they were having at the, the ranch in Houston because literally everybody had drama. <laughs> and if you notice, Mimi was present at a lot of these drama-filled events, but she was like mom's a word all season long and so she was basically like I had my fair share of drama seasons one two three and four baby I don't need it anymore I'm just here to observe so she said I just eat and you know I watch it unfold I don't blame Mimi for that you know I totally get where she's coming from however we are here for the tea. We are Mimi. If Mimi don't want the smoke, get the F off the show. Like, you, she doesn't really have a storyline at this point. You know, she's kind of just here, there, and everywhere. And I guess there and everybody else's drama. But she doesn't really have much drama of her own anymore. And so I just feel like if that's... I mean, I, I'm all here for her collecting her check and not really being a part of the franchise. Or not really having drama. Just there to get her, her little bag. But... There's no point in being a part of something like that. Like, I feel like if that's the case, she should distance herself and find some work, you know? But instead, she's over here dilly-dallying and showing her face on this awful show. I feel like she needs to find something else to do with her time if she's not going to say anything. Like, why is she on camera ever? <laughs> so yeah, she stated she's had her fair share of drama four seasons in a row and... She doesn't need to have any more. Nothing really important was addressed here other than that. BK mm, kind of addressed why he was defending Sierra, but he said where he's from, that's just what they do. If somebody's trying your girlfriend, you better defend her, especially if it's more than one person and they might jump her. You should be defending her. My hands are so ashy. So now it's time to address Keely and Blue. I'm not really going to spend too much time on Keely and Blue because they're both kind of irrelevant. But Keely did say that the reason she never told Bocce about Blue was like the intimidation factor. And so Bocce defends himself and he says, first of all, I'm a grown ass man. Can't nobody put any intimidation in my heart. And I said, okay. All right. But other than that, they were just talking about their co-parenting, said that they don't really have a choice, they have to co-parent, and yeah, there was really nothing to it. And then we went on to addressing Mama D and all her foolishness this season. I was shocked to find out Mama D's only 54, but I feel like the last time Mama D's age was announced, I said the same thing. I feel like I said I was shocked because I really feel like Mama D's in her 60s. Like, she seems so old. She's literally younger than my mom. And I did ask thought she was in her 60s. I just did. But she's not. So, there is that. She's only 54. And all this stuff was boring. Like, there was nothing. There's no need for me to recap this. Like... There really isn't. This is Up To No Good by Fenty. It's not single, so don't come for me. And basically, everybody was kind of just giving their final statements. And Sierra said that was her first and last time going horseback riding. She'll never do it again. Nina asked Erica for one final Do-Re-Mi. Girl, listen to this. do -re No. <laughs> I said, y'all know this girl can't sing, and Erica knows she can't sing, so I'm still baffled as to why she was mad at Stevie. Like, hit dogs holla, baby. Yes, they do. I really feel like I could set this look off with like a purple lip or something, 
but not today, okay? It's just, it's not a thing. Rashida said that her and Kirk are opening up a bar. I said, what in the Peter Real Housewives of Atlanta is going on here? Her and Kirk are opening up a bar, restaurant, field type of situation. I said, no, I'm good, love, and joy. Like, we don't need it. We don't need any more business ventures between these two mother efforts. Like, they're so annoying. Oh. And Tokyo stated that if her and Tobias do end up having sex, she will post a pickle on Instagram. So I'll be looking out for pickles on Tokyo's Instagram, even though I'm not following her. I'm a chick. I'm gonna just go creep up on her, okay? So that's basically it for this reunion. You guys have begged me, literally on Instagram, on Twitter, and on obviously YouTube, you guys have begged me to review Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. A bitch is undecided. I haven't watched the super trailer yet. I'll watch it. I really don't want to review the damn show. You guys really like suck the life out of me when it comes to these reviews. It's not even funny. But I'll consider it. I feel like I should challenge you guys if this video gets... If this video gets 2,000 likes... 2,000 it is. If this video gets 2,000 likes, I will review Hollywood or recap Hollywood for you guys. But if it doesn't, y'all is on your damn own. I can't with the reviews. Oh my gosh. Anyway, you guys, I love you all so much and I will definitely see you in the next one.